Hey, New Life family, welcome back to Word Focus. The title of the message this Sunday, or today, was Fire Falls, Fire Sends. This year, I'm sure if you're involved in the life of our church, if you're especially if you're a life group leader, you know that the our, 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 our word, not word focus, our emphasis and direction this year is anchored. So what is that all about? We're going back to basics, back to the building blocks of everything that we do, the why behind the what. And so for this Sunday, I wanted to take time, especially because we're, as we're going into revival, revival nights, I wanted to take time and, and preach about the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But really, uh, just to walk through a few things in the book of Acts and, and a few of the miracles of, of God and why we need the Holy Spirit, why it matters. And so let's jump in right now and talk about this. The first point is promises, right? So if, if New Life is your home, which I'm assuming it is because you're watching this right now, if New Life is your home, we, we are a church that believes in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Not that there's something from the past, but that they're still relevant and available today. We believe that healing is still available. We believe in praying in tongues and prophetic words uh, from the Holy Spirit uh, in line with Scripture, of course. But we believe in the gifts of the Spirit, the move of the Spirit. We believe in all of these things still. And yes, we pray in tongues. We're a Pentecostal church. Right. And, and so we believe in all these things. And so it's important, especially in a church that's as old as ours, 30 something years, 33, 34 years, that we always go back to the basics and remind ourselves, you know, the, about the foundation. So let's let's go. Point number one was promises. So I had two, uh, a few verses here. John chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus is giving a promise, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Right? So this first promise, Jesus is saying, this is what the Holy Spirit will do. The Father will send him in my name and he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have sent to you. The Holy Spirit is helping us. He's guiding us and he's bringing into remembrance. He brings into remembrance the word of the Lord. Now, this is important. A lot of people think Pentecostals are crazy. We just make up a bunch of stuff because we're led by the Holy Spirit. It's important to note right here that Jesus is saying, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit is does not lead us to new revelations that are against the teaching and word of the Lord. Everything works in unison together. So if we, if we feel led in a direction or we feel a word or, or anything that we think is the Holy Spirit that's in any way contradictory to the word of God and the teachings of Jesus Christ, that's not the Holy Spirit. It's either our emotions or something else, but the Holy Spirit will never teach us anything that is contradictory to the word of God. Second promise in John 16, 6 to 14 but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Jesus is talking to the disciples. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judge. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. That's again, that's a really important promise and statement from Jesus. But whatever he hears, he will speak. Who is he hearing from? The, from God the Father. And he will declare to you, the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So again, there's a promise from Jesus. I will send the helper. I will send the Holy Spirit. And, and I, 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 I stopped in my message and I emphasize this. And I want all of us to really take time in our life groups and think about what this means for the body of Christ, for, the, for all followers of Jesus. The Son of God, the Messiah, second person of the Trinity. 
God made flesh is telling his disciples is better that I go. It's better that I go, that I ascend to heaven with and, 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 and rejoin with my father in heaven so that I can send a helper to you. Why? Because Jesus put on flesh and when he ascended back into heaven, his, or before that, but after Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended into heaven, his, his flesh became glorified, but he is still, he is still wearing that body. He is still in a body, right? But it is, it is glorified. Jesus chose, uh, God chose to put flesh on. The Holy Spirit is sent so that all of us can have the Spirit in us and on us wherever we go because this is the work of the Lord that we're called to accomplish. So I really want all the life groups to think about this. How powerful is that? That Jesus says, it's better that I go so that I can send the helper. Why? Because what Jesus did, the signs, the miracles, the wonders, and the most importantly, the preaching of the gospel wasn't just meant to stop at him. It was never meant to stop with him. It was meant to be continued and multiplied exponentially with all of his disciples. And because he has set the Holy Spirit, we can do, we are able to do what Jesus did. Okay, so I want to uh, continue point number two commands. Now, I won't spend a lot of time here, but I think it's really important. In Acts 1, 4 to 5, and while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And I, so I want everyone to think about this, okay? Jesus, before starting his ministry, Jesus goes to John the Baptist and he is baptized. What does Jesus say? That he must be baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness. Okay, most of you will know that. John baptizes Jesus and it's in the scripture says that when Jesus came out of the water, the, the heavens, <coughs> excuse me, the heavens were torn open or the word is rend, like torn open. Okay, and the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove okay not a dove but like a dove okay and then after that is when jesus starts his ministry he starts his ministry after being anointed by the holy spirit so i just i i want everyone to really discuss this and just really take time to think about how important is the baptism of the holy spirit how important is the holy spirit working in our, our lives if jesus tells his disciples this is going to happen. I will send the Holy Spirit and all of these things that the Holy Spirit will do for you and do through you and in you. Okay. Then the, then Jesus tells his disciples, go forth. He gives them the great commission. Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, etc., etc. But then he says, all of these things you've got to do and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, but you can't do any of these things. Don't leave until I send the Holy Spirit and, and until you are baptized. Jesus on earth needed the anointing of the Holy Spirit. What we can't think of ourselves as so special that we don't also need the baptism, the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit if we're going to accomplish what we've been called to do. And I'll say this, yes, we believe that as the scripture shows us, you can most definitely be a Christian while also not having the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We see that in the scripture. So just because you're not baptized by the Holy Spirit doesn't make you any less of a Christian. But we believe in the, that we need the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, okay? And so uh, I want to I wanna just take some time. And again, this is going to be a, a bit of a different week, okay? I'm going to go through these verses real fast. But here's, here's, here's what I want to do. And I'll, I'll go through these verses and then we'll, we'll wrap up because I want you guys to spend some time. I'm going to say, I'm going to read through all these verses and here's what I want all the life groups to do. I want everyone to sit and talk about how amazing God is. Just sit and talk about the beauty of these works and all of these things that are being described. When was the last time we simply sat in our life group and just talked about how amazing God is? So let's, let's start here. <clears throat> Acts 3, 6 to 8. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. 
and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. What a miracle. Acts 4.32 says this, Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as were owners of land or houses sold or, or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. You might be hearing that and thinking, okay, where's the miracle? For me, this is, this is a miracle. The Holy Spirit leading the uh, disciples of Jesus. There was, uh, it says here, this statement for me is amazing. For as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. And I love it if you if we rewind, it says here, but they had everything in common. Now, I'm not reading this because I have no intention of trying to manipulate anyone to give more money to the church. I simply want everyone to think about the conviction and the, the love and working of the Holy Spirit that it takes for followers of Jesus Christ to make sure that no none of their brothers and sisters around them are needy, homeless, or, or anything like that. That no one was forcing them, no one was coercing them. It was simply an act of, of love and following Jesus that they took care of each other. Acts 8.38 says this, And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus. And then it continues on. We read that the Holy Spirit is literally taking Philip and moving him somewhere else in the world. This is absolute. This is like I, I hesitate to say. You know, it's <laughs> it's uh, what it, you know. It's like Star Trek, like being it beaming him somewhere else. Um, but this is absolutely amazing. And let's let's end here. Acts five or there's two more. Acts five fifteen to sixteen. So that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, as they, and they were all healed. Again, all life groups, I just want you to take some time and just sit in the presence of God and, and talk about how amazing God is amazing how the the power of the holy spirit it says here that peter's shadow was healing the sick didn't even have to touch anyone simply walking by people and the power of god was was healing people lastly i want to say this uh in Acts 16 we had, we have the the story of paul and silas paul and silas are beaten up and they're thrown in prison and uh, most of us will know the story they're they're thrown in prison and what do they do they begin to worship god it chained up in, in, in bondage, in a jail, they begin to worship God. And most of us would know what happens. God shakes the prison free. All of them are set free, not just Paul and Silas, but other prisoners as well. And here's what I want us to get. And this is really the whole point of the message. This is really the whole point of, <clears throat> of being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes, we believe in praying in tongues and, and healing and, and prophecy and all of these things. But what is the point? Of all of the gifts of the Spirit, all of the, what's the point of being baptized by the Holy Spirit? What is the point of all of it? For me, I think we can see the point. Of course, we, we see it throughout Acts and throughout the Scripture, but I just love the story of Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas are set free from their prison, from their shackles. And what do they do? They don't run off into the, and hide in the hills or go off. They stay put and then they end up setting free the the jailer that was keeping them in jail the the soldier the centurion the the wh whatever you want to call him the the soldier that was in charge of making sure they did not get out of prison they don't leave but they make sure that they preach to him and he receives jesus christ as lord and savior for me this is what it's all about i love seeing 
miracles, signs, and wonders, and I want to expect it in my day to day. And I and when we see it in church, it's amazing. But it's not just for us to go, oh my God, that's amazing. Look what God can do. The whole point of the the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the whole point of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the whole point is for the gospel to be preached, for the church of Christ to be established and continued for people to get saved. That is the whole point. That's why that's why we preach. That's why we pray. That's why we do everything that we do. And that's why the gifts were given to men and women is because the gospel is what Jesus wants us to preach. We don't just have signs and miracles and wonders for their sake. It's all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The fire uh, of, of the Holy Spirit falls down in the day of Pentecost, and then they're called and sent out. I, I'm stealing this from another pastor. His name is Chad Veach, uh, uh, but I love how he, I heard him say this a couple years back. I want everyone to talk about this. Say this as you're watching it. He's in me for me. He's on me for others. This is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is about. When you say yes to Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit, uh, the seal of the Holy Spirit. But when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is a it is a well of living water that is overflowing out of you, off of you, onto others. That you can pray for the sick. You can uh, you can prophesy. You can. You can be led by the Holy Spirit. All of these things I could go on and on. But the whole point is he's in me for me. He's on me for others. We're not called to live for ourselves. We're called to live for others and bring the gospel out wherever we may go. And so take time. Think about these passages. Think about this word. Love you, New Life family. And whoever is here next week, you're going to be blessed too. All right, God bless. Bye.